Coming up on today's Retro Robin Show, we've got news, we've got re-reviews, and we've got Commodore vs. Spectrum. Yes, so join me next as we go back to 1987. June, as a matter of fact, and issue number 41 of Crash is where we'll be taking the games, re-reviewing them, and seeing if they stand the test of time. The test of time. The test of time. <laughs> I'm getting worse. Okay, title's time. Welcome to the Retro Robin Show with me, Wayne. So, what's on today's show? We've got a little bit of news for you. And, ooh, big change of music there. We're going to have a little bit of a re-reviews from the Crash issue number 41. We're going to be taking games out of that, re-reviewing them, and see if they stand at test of times. There may be some games that you might have forgotten about. Uh, could be a hidden gem, or ones that got a worse rating than they deserve. We'll find out as well. And of course, towards the end of the show, we'll do some more Commodore vs Spectrum. And at the moment, in round one, Spectrum is 1-0 up. Get in there. But don't worry, I'm sure Commodore will have something to say about that. So, straight on with today's show. And the first thing we can tell you, if you missed it the other day, Chris was on live Facebook, um, doing a live feed, uh, talking about Crash and giving us some updates and um, getting some really cool stuff out there and of course Oliver Frey as well as uh, Roger uh, both the main people in Crash from back in the day joined in on the chat and that was absolutely brilliant well pleased about that because as you know I'm a big Crash fan and I can't wait to get that Crash magazine here so I can have a quick breeze through it and tell you a little, a little bit about it but not too much because I wouldn't want to spoil it for everybody else, it's great. So, we're looking at um, Crash Magazine, number 41, from June 1987. And of course, mirrored at the moment, because I haven't turned this round. That is the cover. Cracking bit of artwork, of course, as always, what you come to expect with from Crash. Um, it's what sold the magazine, you'd see that on the shelf compared to everything else and wow, it instantly draws your eyes to it, it sold it basically, you know, pictures, well pictures say a thousand words don't they? So, in the meantime, we'll move on to today's reviews and this one in Crash, we'll go down to, it says all my files up on the screen for you. Right, the game is course Dogfight 2187 and the retail price, got all my big book, hmm. I write everything down you know, I'm, I'm kind of organised, I know you don't think it but I am, <sighs> been a long week. Right, the retail price was £8.95 so it wasn't a cheap one, uh, producer was Starlight and um, Timothy Walker was the the author. So, what do Crash say about this particular game? Before we show you, let's give you the what Crash said about it, and then of course, as always, I'm going to give it the marks out to 10 rating. You know, I don't do percentages, that's just the way I like to rate my games, between 0 to 10. And of course, if you get to 10, it's called a Retro Robin Special, and worth a go if you haven't already played it. So, presentation was given 66%, graphics was given 65%, Playability, that means how easy it is to, to actually play the game and get into the game, was given a 56%, so usually when that rating is down low, it can be quite tricky to play, and believe me, every game's quite tricky to play for me nowadays. Um, I've been spoiled over the years, haven't I? It gets easier as you get older. Um, addictive quality is 53%, which is self-explanatory. Um, how often are you going to go back to play it? You know? And... Um, Value for money, 51%. So basically you didn't get 100% value for money. Perhaps it was overpriced. And that's what that's about. So the overall rating was 56%. So let's have a look at the game, shall we? And of course I think we'll use the, the Z80 file today. And I'll tell you what we'll also do. A bit of dodgy retro robins camera work. As always, let's zoom in on the picture. And there's the game in its full glory. And of course, in, oops, 
need to refer to my book. In Crash, of course, the, this particular magazine used to give you a list of the keys to use. So, hopefully we can define them. It also tells you if you can redefine the keys. Oh, Crash the good old days. Loved it, loved it a lot. Right. Let's just flick to the review itself. Which is usually at the back. Because that's the way I start is I go from the back and work my way forwards to the front of the book. That way sometimes I can do more than one show. Oh, and of course, the computer of choice today will be a combination of the 48K Spectrum, the Omni... Uh, laptop and of course the toast rack and of course maybe even depending on uh, time bearing plus three for one of the games as well so we'll try and get as many games in as we can uh, but without making this show too long uh, right yeah it's joystick Kempston comp capable that's good to know um, but the keys are basically definable and that's even better to know so let's get on and have a look at the game shall we so we want to press R for redefining the keys. Ah, slow, fast and weapons. And of course you got a two player, but we're not going to be playing two player because there's only one of me. Sound. Okay, and hold. Straight away you can see, um, I'll see what we'll do as well, just in case that's too loud. Turn it up a touch. <laughs> if you can hear that hopefully. It's very fast moving, um, it's pretty neat actually. Uh, I've just hit something. A bit like the the start of 3D um, Star Strike in a way, or there are, there's many games that's like this isn't it, I mean one of the great games which was to do with airplanes I used to play a lot was Top Gun, it reminds me a little bit of that, but genuinely in space, and that rocket does look like a, a rocket, the ships are quite good. I like the fact that you've got two different backgrounds between the two players, so you've got a, a darker background for player one and a more white uh, use for player two. And there we go, we've got some more baddies to shoot, which is a good thing. So, I'm not going to keep playing this, I'm going to review it. and. Um, I have played it quite a bit, and to be honest, I found it quite a good game. So, if Crash gave that an overall rating of 56%, um, which was quite low, but the value for money was quite low as well. Yeah, it probably was a little bit expensive, £8.95, um, but I felt 56% was a bit too low, because the game's not bad at all. It's quite playable. Um, it's probably even better with two players. Um, there isn't much sound in it other than the firing, so um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I like the little graphical layout of it as well. So I'm going to give that a 7.5 out of 10. One for you to try maybe? Well, that's what this show's all about. Shall we move on to the next game? I'm just going to reset the computer. So let's move on to the next game, of course, and uh, we'll give this... Uh, Hook up my files quickly. And of course, as always, today's show is run on real hardware. No um, simulation here at all. No emulation at all. It's all run on Spectrums, all Spectrum type clones. It's the only way to do the show, isn't it? Be an insult to use anything else. So, the next game we're going to go to is... We're going to go to Enterprise. And of course, this was £7.95 um, from Melbourne House. Presentation was given 64%, the graphics was given 63%, playability 61%, so it must be pretty good to play. Addictive qualities, of course, 53%, value for money 61%. That's not too bad. So an overall rating of 59%. 
So, what do we use? Should we use the top four and see if we can get the logo up? And that was a brief look at the logo. Enter your name. Oh, what's my name? Oh. Idiot. That's it. I just spell idiot. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> I'm cleverer than I look. What do you mean I'm not? <laughs> right then, okay, so you've got your choice between Kempston, Interface 2, Cursor and Keyboard. And of course, as Enterprises, it tells you the keys in the magazine, so I can quickly... Uh, we'll use the Cursor key, shall we? Okay. Oh, B Keyboard must be Cursor, so... Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's start the game. So if we, if we use cursor, then usually to start it's got to be fire. Oh, I like that, yeah. It's got like a big... I presume that represents a type of planet. And as you build your speed up, you're travelling through space, that's getting closer. Oh, and I must have just crashed into the planet anyway. <laughs> oh no, actually, they've made it to the surface. So there's something coming up there. Let's build a bit of speed up. Oh, we need to get out. I might ram it. So we're rapidly approaching it. We're cruising speed at the moment. I must admit, it's, it's not bad, is it? The, the look of it and the feel of it. It's got an annoying habit that you have to take your, your finger off the zero in order to, to pan down, up, down, left and right. So that looks like a landing ship to me. Whether it is or not, I don't know, but yeah. Yes, it is, isn't it? You can clearly see that's a landing ship. We're going to crash into that anyways. So let's have a look at the general layout of the game. It's pretty good. Um, you can tell they... I like the use of red numbers over the green. Um, <laughs> just, it's just telling me. Engine landing gear. <laughs> Engage landing gear. Okay. Not to read from this distance. So they gave it a 56%, which is effectively 5 out of 10. Um, maybe 6 if you top it up. What do I think of it? Well, I played it for a little bit earlier, and I thought, I don't know, I was kind of on the fence, undecided about what I thought about it, but um, I'm going to give it, I'm going to agree with Crash totally. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 rating. One for you to try. I'm still trying to learn the gists of these games because obviously some of these games I've never played before and I'm going to give it a go so you know I might try that at a later date. Should we move on to another game quickly? Indeed we shall. So let's have a look at the next game. This might not work but we'll try it. Not every game worked you see. We'll go for the top file. The final matrix. Right so this uh, retailed at £8.95 and of course it was by Gremlin Graphics. Now, I've never really understood the difference that some games were by Gremlin and some games were by Gremlin Graphics. Was it just the same company, should I know? I should find that out really, shouldn't I? Maybe I will one day, eh? Presentation, 72% graphics, 76% playability. And that's an important one. 65% addictive qualities. 79%. Now that's good. That's good. When you get that high, that must mean it's, it's easy to get into. Uh, value for money, 65%. Well, it was quite expensive, so, you know. And its overall rating was 75%. And hopefully, we're going to look at what we can do. There's a few things flicking on the screen. It's a nice colourful start to the game, isn't it? Telling you a bit of what everything is. Redefinable, okay. It 
two for keyboard controls, okay, so we got, oh, we got left, we can use T-U-O, so it's O-P, uh, Q-A, Z and M, which is, that's good, that's all we need, Z and M, Z and M and Z, yeah, M to Z, that's basically what I'm right. okay, good luck, oh, thank you, <laughs> I need it. <laughs> Oh, that's nice, isn't it? That's quality, that is. So I presume you've got a... It's quite difficult to control. Ah. Oh, yeah, you're the robot, aren't you? So you're going to go around the screen to probably doing various tasks. And... I've <laughs> crushed. I get the general idea. That worked first time before. That's the first time he's done that, believe it or not. So... Probably because my toast rack likes to overheat sometimes. I've had it on all day. I've been playing these things, haven't I? But give it a go. Um, I'll give it another try later. But generally speaking, I'm going to give that a. I'm going to agree with that because I want to move on to the next game and try and get as many games in. I'm not going to go back to play it. But um, what you've seen there is mainly what you get a gen general gist of the game. I. Got to be honest, I played it for a bit, didn't quite get on with it. It started off great, it's graphically nice in certain areas, great loading screen and all. Um, but I'm going to give that... I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. That's the Retro Robins rating. You may not agree with it, but please go and give it a go. That's what it's there for. You might find it is a better game for yourself, one you've never played before, or one you used to play a lot and kind of forgotten about, who knows. Let's move on to the next game. So we're going to move on to the next game. I'm just going to tell you the name of the game we're going to check out right now. It is of course called, and it's a long title, so perhaps I should have a sip of my Pepsi Map Max before I read this out. I can't even say Pepsi Max without stumbling over my words. I must be getting tired. The Amazing Adventures of Mr. Weebs and the She-Vampires. I'm out of breath now. I don't like it when I've got long things to say. So there's the logo. And of course you can redefine your keys. You've got K for keys or J for joystick. And um, what did Crash make of this one? Well, presentation they gave 59%. Graphics they gave 63%. Playability 67%. Addictive qualities they... Um, Stop talking over me. <laughs> Addictive quality 62%. Got a phone call. <laughs> and value for money 57%. Overall rating 64%. This is a bare bones YouTube channel. Things go wrong. And quite often on this show they go wrong. But that's the beauty of it isn't it really. So let's have a look at the game. We'll go for J for joystick. And we'll type in your... I don't know. Uh, initials. And press any key to start. Okay. Oh, I see. Right, you've got a little great colourful uh, use of sprites. You can fire. I'll click the key to get into the next section of the maze. And if you don't break those pots, that's where they come from. I've now got two keys, so I should be able to get through both of those sections. Use lots of rapid fire. There's another key there, and there's a bottle, so I'm going to get that potion and bottle. Flicks between the maps pretty quick. I like the little graphical display of the vampire at the bottom. I hope that's not just the she vampire. I haven't really played it too much, so I've got to be honest, but from what I have played with it, it's um, it's okay. I'm gonna be honest. There's a couple of bottles in there, so they tend to home in on you as well. And as soon as you, as soon as you arrive, I mean, it's, it's pretty hard to escape them. To be honest, they stay they stay, they stay on the screen and crack out them pots straight away. Hmm. is pretty big. A little bit like Gauntlet really, but you could kill the uh, the bad guys in Gauntlet it's a lot easier, couldn't you? Ah. So I need another key to get those two keys. 
I'll change the AY sound in a minute. I know this one's getting a bit repetitive and boring. But the reason why I've got that playing is because there's a feature at the end of the show that I'm going to use it for. Ah, I've got the key. So now I can go back down there and get those other two keys. Oh, there's a potion and a thing in there, isn't there? Which you kind of have to do that, to be honest, because you can run out of keys. So. But, and I've got some there as well. You've got garlic and you've got other features you can use. I've just died anyways. So what do I make of that game? Shall I agree with Crash? They gave it an overall rating of 64%, which is effectively 7 out of 10. And um, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I'm going to give it a little bit higher. I thought that was a bit mean, perhaps. It deserved a little bit more better than that. Okay, so that's that one. We'll move straight on to the next game. Get as many as we can in today, eh? Get as many as we can in. And hopefully this will work uh, first time. And we've got to go with... I will go with the Z84 today, shall we? Red Scorpion, presentation 66%. Oh, it retailed at £8.95 by Quicksilver. So we've got presentation at 66%. Graphics at 53%. Playability at 36%. Addictive quality is 39%. And... Um, Value for money 38%, so, you know, overall rating 41%, quite low, quite low. Hit the go. Nice loading screen. But I'm afraid it all goes horribly downhill from there, according to Crash, doesn't it? So, I've got to the page and it's got the rating on. I've got them down for each, haven't I? And the, let's have a look what keys you can use. It looks like QA, OP, and uh, up and down, and whatever. So, okay. One keyboard, yes, please. Press fire to launch. What is fire? Okay. And good luck. Thank you. Um, I'm just looking at one or two of the comments, actually. So we've launched. Have we got to blow that up? Oh, yeah. We blew that up pretty quickly. Keys are kind of funny, to be quite honest. They're not the, your standard use of keys. And that was quick, wasn't it? But I have played that for a bit. It's, it's another one of them wireframe 3D games where you move along platforms. But. Um, because I want to get as many games as I can in today, 4 out of 10, I would say. No, I thought it was a little bit better. I'm going to give. I'm going to go halfway. I'm going to sit on the fence. I'm going to go in one above it. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Um, it took me a long time to get into it, so um, the playability of uh, rating was right. It was quite tricky in parts. You can die pretty quickly as well. Um, so yeah, let's move on again. Now we get to the interesting games, we got all the little reviews out of the way. And I'm going to go to this one first of all because it was one that uh, is really difficult. Howard the Duck Quack by Activision. And of course it was £9.99. Bargain! If he was a millionaire. <laughs> Software Studios, we don't hear many from there, um, was the author, so that was a separate uh, that did it for Activision. Right, presentation 77%, graphics 72%, playability 59%, addictive qualities 49%, value for money 53%, yeah, if you had the money, and overall rating 61%. So. Howard the Duck, of course, he's a redefinable keys if I remember right then. Is it? Ooh, better be. Better be. Oh yeah. Doesn't matter. You can use joystick anyway, so yeah. Um, I think we'll go for if we change from A to B, we'll go C. We'll use the interface. I meant to put expert. Oops, my mistake. My bag. 
By the first thing I've noticed, it's nice to start with, but it's really difficult to just jump over that pool. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You have to really get a good run up on it and give it a good. And if you don't make it, you, you just keep you sliding back. And you need to get on over that pool because you can't you can't get across the water without collecting something just up there. And of course you've got the time counting down. And this is going to be almost impossible using a joystick. Come on. How did I not make that? It's not only just getting over there, but to get any further you've... Um, because if, if you if you don't click that object, it'll say, Oh, I can't swim. You're a duck, you should be able to waddle. A duck with a head on it, normal head. So. Oh, wait. oh, come on, how close was that? I'm going to do the power of editing in a minute. Maybe I need a big over and up. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. Oh, that's just unreal. Editing time. So I did that first time, as you remember. <laughs> and just as hard as to get back across because of... <laughs> you have to do a good run up. And that was not fair because that was pretty... That was pretty... That was pretty close, wasn't it? Yeah. And then we've made it, so we can move on to the next section of the game. Oh, it's so easy to get over that bit, isn't it? Are you press fire? On a rapid lead to try and waddle. He can walk on water now. A duck normally waddles, but he can walk on water. Oh. Okay, we're through to the next section. I mean, you have to look at the overall. It is kind of colourful, it's kind of well done. Um, but the scroll is just a jerky down, and I, it's not great, is it? And then you've got to basically beat that guy up, and you've got to beat a few guys like that up. And if you if you don't do it quickly, just stamp on his hole so he doesn't come out again. The sprite to the duck ain't too bad, is it? Really? No, I'll see better. Maybe I should just enlarge that just so you can see the sprite to the duck a little bit. Don't get hiding now. <laughs> yeah. Movement's okay. Oh, hang on, I'm about to get killed. That caught me on a where's then. Ah, have that. There we go, touch. Let's defocus it. Better. Right, moving on. So you work your way round the maze. Because they come out that old, don't they? So you just gotta. And I'm dead anyway, so yeah. Um, well, I'm not gonna play that too long. It's, you've got a certain amount of time, anyways, and I've used most of it up, so I'm not gonna get very far. So, how went the duck? I don't think it was good value for money, to be honest, because it was too expensive at £9.99, and um, its overall rating got 61%, which is 6 out of 10. I'm not gonna say it was that good, I didn't like it, I'll be honest. Sorry, it's me. You may have, but not me. Um, I found it tricky, harder to play than he said, and uh, I'm only going to give that a, um, a dismal 4 out of 10. That's me. You may disagree. This is only opinion after all. So, let's move on to today's last game. And this one's a trick. Well, it looks great, but boy, is it tough to play. <laughs> So what's about this game then? Okay, well it's an unusual one. Uh, Ali Gatika, I don't know, Ali Gatika was the producer. I don't know how to say that. Oh. Livingston, I presume. Okay. £8.95. Oh, what? Um, 
presentation 71%, graphics 70%, playability 80%. Addictive quality 74%, value for money 77%, overall 77%. And I've already given you a little teaser that I can't play this. I found it really hard. So, let's have a look at the game, shall we? There's your logo. A brief look at it. A loading screen. Are you sick of this AY sound yet? I am. <laughs> But this has got a voice sound, I believe, so let's have a look at it. And of course, I'll be using it. That's dreadful. <laughs> like a little tune to be played out a little bit. You've got keys to select those four little objects at the bottom, so you have to do that in the game. Ooh. All that tune's playing, I can always look up the keys, can't I? Thanks to Crash, putting them in there. QA, up, down, OP, and space. Okay, we can do that. And the problem is, with space on a rubber keyboard game, it's Um, so I need to select one of those at the top. If I select that now, I can fire, surely, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you don't want to go there? Oh, no, I fell down there, and that's usually the, the end. Because there's no way I'm going to get back up the top. So the best way I can do that is I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I'm just going to restart the game. It's a game. Get on with it. Right. It's nice, colourful. Oh, you're dead straight away if one of them acorns hit you. Really, you've got to try and land on that log. I didn't do that either. Sometimes I find it hard to get up there. I need to check the fire with the Try the bomb. It's funny how you can end up in a different part of the screen straight away. Well, I'm not going to play too much because. Uh, I struggle to, because I think that's a switch at the roof you've got to try and sort of knock. Um, to get really far in the game, I struggle to f figure out what to do. I gave it a good go, I gave it a full effort. So I really could, wouldn't give it proper justice if I didn't get into the game to actually suggest what it was about. Um, but I should give it a rating um, for my experience. And because the crash gave it an overall rating of 77%, which was quite high, I didn't agree. Um, from what I found, I found it a little bit too tricky. It's graphically nice, um, but perhaps I should watch the um, the walkthrough on YouTube to see what to do. I'm going to give you this 6 out of 10. So, let's move on to today's final feature. Yeah, coming up now. So the two games we're going to compare today, um, programmed by Jim Bagley, I believe, um, is Guts. We're going to have a look at the Commodore version and see if it compares to the Spectrum version and then choose which one is the best. And there's the loading screen for the Commodore version. Of course, with the Commodore, when they load, sometimes you get music that plays in the background. So I thought I'd show you that. But we don't have to watch this load because we can go and review the Spectrum version first and move on to the Commodore one next, which is exactly what we're going to do. So, for that, I need to just quickly 
take the squat lead out, otherwise we get signal interrupt. Which we'll plug that back in a moment, while that loads up that is. And have a look at the Spectrum version, which I'm using the Omni uh, for. I've used the Toast Racker as well so far today. Got all my files on that toast rack using the V2 smart card as the peripheral that is plugged into the back of that as well. So I need to go to games. Do I? No, I'll go to demos. I forgot for some unknown reason I put all my games under demos. Well, they are really to me demos, aren't they? So what can I tell you about this game? It's by Ocean. That's one thing. <laughs> And um, unlike, I know, by the way, if you watched me on um, the Retro Engine the other day, and I mentioned Anterior when I was actually trying to say Amorotti, <laughs> sometimes I get something in the back of my mind and the wrong thing comes out. And uh, yeah, it was Amorotti I was trying to talk about, um, which was reviewed on last week's show. And of course, the Spectrum won because Amorotti. Uh, for the Commodore 64 was a 2D game and the Spectrum was an isometric game um, and had a lot more detail in it and um, the music didn't really make that much of a difference because the Spectrum music was more spookier and it was a much better version in total um, in fact it didn't compare didn't really compare at all um, Spectrum won outright so round one went to the Spectrum. So will round two go to the Spectrum? We'll find out now. That's the loading screen for the Spectrum. As you can see, it's not as colourful as... Um, well, it is as colourful, but, you know, there's a little bit less colour crash. You can hear there's music in the background. It's bleeper sound at the moment, but there is a 1 to 8K sound to it as well. Um, but we're not going to worry about that too much. Well, actually, to give it justice, we should load the 1 to 8K version, shouldn't we? To be fair, um, because if you're going to go AY sound, let's go for the Z80. It's not the Z80 file, is it? Is it a snapshot? It must be the snap. No? Okay. So anyway, you've got a nice colourful little display. I like the, the special effects scrolling up. I've reviewed this on a previous Retro Robin show. And um, you can press between... That's guys. But I want to see I want to see the information, please. Thank you. Um, interface 2 is what I'm going to use. And we're going to go... Three start game. My keyboards are QAO, P and M. Right, before you can fire your weapon, you need to locate somewhere to power it up. Uh -huh. Which is that, see that little eye down there? So I've got to go across and down. And it's important that you do that. Or she can't fire. And now, I can fire my weapon. And then you've got to find another item, because you, you find three parts of a, a like what looks to be a gun I believe but um, yeah there's that see that box there I've got to go and click that now really there's a helmet you can collect as well so we need to work your way around the maze it's kind of square it's not bad it's very smooth scrolling excellent bit of code to be quite honest with you but for the spectrum to be smooth coding is, you know, remarkable. So apparently, in the early days, it didn't think you could be done, did they? Well, coders worked their way around it, so... <clears throat> you can get stuck. I've got my guns anyway, so that's that's better than, the, uh, than I usually do. I've got my rapid fire on, that's it. Click that, you can see that's your first box ticked. And to get the next one, you've got to move up a level, basically. So you've got to walk through a sequence, which I'm going to show you now. Not properly playing the game, I'm just getting through it for you. Home isn't great, though, is it? Oh, no, we've got to come down here, haven't we? I think we've got to walk along there. That's it. We're going to show you in a minute. We're going to... 
walk what seems to be like a tunnel uh, sequence. Jim, you should give me some pokes for this, so as I can cheat. Make it easier. <laughs> Make it easier for people like me who's rubbish at these sort of things. Great game though. He's not shown yet. Ah, here we go. Right, you get this little tunnel sequence, which moves you into a next zone or level or whatever. And you should be coming up. Should be coming up to the. Um... You can tell I'm bad at it, can't you? When you get to there, you move on to the next section. Slightly different graphics, all square on. Oops, I want to go back up there, sorry. So that's guts for the Spectrum. So let's see how it compares to the Commodore. So there you go, there's the Commodore uh, first screen. As you can see, it's nicely colourful. Um, there's like a little flickering background. There's nothing really to choose between the two because the Spectrum one's well done. Obviously the SID chip sounds going to be slightly better because I didn't put the a wave sound version on of that. But we won't judge it from that. Um, yeah, we're going to go for one. Okay, I'm free to begin. And that's that show. Uh, you've, you've probably sick of this uh, tune straight away, aren't you, um, from previous. So... Need to find somewhere to power your weapon up. There it is. Now I've got my weapon. I can move on a little bit. The difference is it's not sort of square graphics. It's more of a terrain. Oh, and I need to get that helmet there. However, once again, the scrolling is really smooth. It's not jerky. It's... I need to pair my weapon, I've lost my weapon already. I find I keep getting stuck on the rocks. Right, and um for wiki re review. I need to learn the mazes a bit better, don't I? Because I haven't got a clue how to get around them sometimes, but don't play very often. I've lost my helmet. I want my helmet back. I feel vulnerable without that. <laughs> Jim, it must have took you hours to design this maze. Oh, here we go. We're going to get out and show you the uh, the tunnel part. Any minute now. Slightly more colourful. And this one, you ain't got a bully. That you've got sort of like a bouncing bomb type effect with the gun, haven't I? And as always, I'm biting the dust on a regular basis. Watching Retro Robins die, that's the usual thing. So, that's the two games. What do you think? Is it going to be Commodore this time round, or is it going to be Spectrum again? 1 0 to the Spectrum at the moment. I'll show you my conclusion now. Yeah, sorry to say, I had to give that one Commodore. Simply because it was not so square, it had a bit more feel to the terrain. Yeah, they've got good SID sound as well. Um, you might not agree with that, but hey, it's only an opinion after all.
Well, for me, Retro Robins, that concludes today's show. Hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, we're going to be doing a special soon. Um, I'm also thinking of doing one or two live shows where you can join me and play games live. I'm just getting some software together for that, of course. And uh, in the meantime, um, don't forget to like, subscribe, even, and share. And of course, everyone knows I drink Pepsi Max a lot, but, you know, I love it. Um, yeah, have a good working week, weekend, depending on when you watch this show. But for me, Retro Robbins, thank you for watching. Take care, and goodbye for now.